Well, joining us now for more analysis on the meetings between President Trump and President Xi Jinping is Graham Webster. He's a senior fellow at the Paul Tsai China Center at Yale. Graham, thank you for joining us. First I'm up, really glad to be here. Great to have you. I want to ask you about the location, the meeting at Mar-a-Lago instead of a more traditional setting like the White House. We also know that President Xi is not really into golf. He kind of considers that an elite sport. So what are they doing at Mar-a-Lago? Uh, well, there's a couple of things going on here. Uh, the first is that, uh, you know, in the, in the rhythm of uh, the back and forth of visits, state visits between the U.S. and China, it's not quite... Uh, the Chinese side's turn to come to the White House for a full-blown visit. It would also have been a bit out of place, I think, to have a full summit at the White House or in Washington uh, when the Trump administration isn't really fully set up. At Mar-a-Lago, you get something a little less formal, a little more personal, uh, but this comes with a risk, and it's not just the Gulf. Uh, the, the risk is that uh, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has already been to Mar-a-Lago. Back in China, people are going to be watching this visit, and they're going to try to see, you know, how does the treatment that President Xi Jinping gets compare to what uh, Prime Minister Abe got. And they're going to hope that, uh, that the Chinese side gets at least as good treatment. We were talking with our Margaret Brennan just a short time ago about the adversarial tone that Trump has taken towards China. What are you watching for when it comes to trade? Is this more of a meet and greet, or will we see something tangible? Uh, I think it's really going to be more of a meet and greet. Uh, there's not time really in this meeting to get a big deal done of any kind. Uh, it's a two-day meeting, but it's really just this afternoon and evening and tomorrow up to lunch. Uh, so this isn't enough time for everyone to hash out a new deal, although ministers and uh, secretaries will be meeting on the side. Uh, what I'm looking for is, will the Chinese government come with some feel-good proposals uh, saying they're going to you know, come up with some plan to build new jobs in the United States or to help with Trump's priorities in infrastructure. Uh, and if they make that kind of offer, is there some sort of thing that, you know, is there something they want from Trump, uh, whether behind closed doors or out in the open, in exchange for that type of uh, confidence building, uh, you know, publicity? And Graham, we know there is something that the White House wants from China. It's more action on North Korea. We mentioned North Korea launched another ballistic missile into the Sea of Japan. What do you think the U.S. will push for with China to make a difference on the North Korea front? Yeah, well, on North Korea, the, the Trump administration has, you know, taken this issue about as seriously as anything in the national security realm. Uh, there has been an internal uh, review of policy that was reported to have concluded recently. Uh, it's unlikely they came up with brand new ideas. Uh, pretty much everything under the sun has been tried. Uh, but the signals out of the White House, out of the State Department, have been that they're done uh, talking about this issue and they want to take action. That means the typical Chinese suggestion that the United States and North Korea and China and everybody get together and have dialogue again is probably not on the table. Uh, in, you know, in the eyes of the Trump administration. They'll be looking for increasing pressure on sanctions. Uh, they'll be looking at, you know, other innovative options. Uh, you know, but this is where we have been for uh, years now. The, what's going to be important is to see whether the two sides can understand their, uh, you know, each side's concerns. Uh, can the Americans take the Chinese concern seriously and vice versa uh, and actually come up with a solution that uh, pragmatically decreases the threat of serious, uh, uh, you know, calamity if, if North Korea were able to uh, threaten the United States with a nuclear weapon? Graham, you mentioned these are not new issues that this White House is having to deal with. White Houses before have had similar, same issues really, on the North Korea front. Do you have any hope or any optimism that this White House can somehow change the read on North Korea with China? Well, it's, uh, you know, I don't have a specific judgment about whether this White House can take this issue on versus any other. Uh, a lot of the staff positions throughout the administration haven't even been filled yet. And in any administration, this would be early days. Uh, what's clear is that the actual situation has changed. Uh, if it was a Hillary Clinton administra administration or anybody else, uh, they would be confronting this problem in a brand new way uh, that really hadn't been faced before simply because the North Korean missile program is believed to be advancing in a way, so say intelligence sources, uh, that would 
threaten the United States sometime probably in this uh, four-year presidential term. Graham Webster with Yale University. Graham, thank you for joining us. Thank you.